In Hong Kong and other Asian megacities, business is the lifeblood that drives a daily hustle and bustle in one of the most successful capitalist markets in the world. It's a dynamism that relies heavily on exports. Businessman Sonny Chai heads a manufacturing alliance in Hong Kong. He says removing barriers to trade must be among APEC's top priorities. For member companies within the alliance, uh, particularly there are people who are selling um, raw material or additives to material for manufacturers uh, uh, within China, uh, in Thailand, Malaysia, or Indonesia. I believe they, these kind of manufacturers and companies uh, will be greatly uh, benefit. With a market of more than two and a half billion consumers, Apex 21 member countries account for about 55% of the world's GDP and 43% of global trade. Economist Fred Bergsten says Apex rise reflects the growing importance of the region. Things have changed a lot, particularly the relative importance of China and the other Asian members of Apex. But it's interesting, APEC has in fact renewed the goals that were initially created back in the 1993-1994 startup of the APEC summits. At that time, the leaders agreed to create free trade and investment in the region by 2010 to 2020. Despite some progress in reducing tariffs, the goal of an Asia-Pacific-wide free trade zone remains largely unfulfilled. Bergston says the Trans-Pacific Partnership proposed by the U.S. would level the playing field and create new opportunities on both sides of the Pacific. The ASEAN countries already have free trade agreements with each of the big Northeast Asian countries, China, Korea, Japan. Um, there are other intra-Asian agreements and all of those inherently discriminate against U.S. trade, thus U.S. business and particularly U.S. workers. Those hurdles include preferential treatment among some trading partners and uneven economic growth among member countries. Another is a currency dispute between the United States and China. Despite Beijing's promise to make its currency more flexible, the UN, or renminbi, has gained only 5% since June. The U.S. insists China's undervalued currency gives its exports an unfair advantage. But Sunny Chai says Asian manufacturers are wary of the currency debate because any sudden moves could affect their bottom line. So when the currency, the RMB currency goes up, meaning the, the entire direct cost goes up. So this is not a good thing for manufacturers. Despite ongoing differences, Bergston says there's room for agreement. At the trade minister's meeting in Montana beginning Thursday, discussions will range from export regulations to the development of incentives to promote trade in green technologies. But Bergston says broader initiatives are likely to take place later this year. I think President Obama has a huge opportunity to assert leadership in the region, try to move APEC toward the goals of free trade in the region, and uh, I think there's a good chance there will be important progress toward that to report at the summit in Hawaii in November. APEC represents a significant forum for American companies wishing to expand. Together, the APEC countries purchase 58 percent of all U.S. exports. Trade officials say continued growth in the region is crucial to the administration's plan to double U.S. exports and create two million jobs. Milar Sega, VOA News.